Hi everyone, my name is Nick Wood, Head of Investment Fund Research at Quilt Achievia, and welcome to the latest edition of the Fund Buyer, the podcast for all things related to the world of fund research. Before we start, my usual reminder that you can sign up to be notified about future podcasts on the Quilt Achievia website, or simply follow hashtag QC Fund Buyer on LinkedIn. You can now also find us on Spotify and Google Podcasts for those of you that pick up your podcast that way. On today's Fund Buyer, discuss a major trend in the US asset management industry that has gone somewhat unnoticed in Europe, the rise of active ETFs. We're beginning to see these instruments move into Europe, but they're nowhere near as popular as in America. Could the next couple of years see that change? Before we delve into the details, what exactly do we mean by an active ETF? For many, ETFs are synonymous with passive investing, but an ETF is simply a vehicle that holds an underlying bundle of investments. Essentially, it's nothing more than a wrapper. It also has the benefit of trading throughout the day on the back of live prices, and as such, can allow a traders greater opportunity to time the market, should that be what they're looking to achieve. In the US, the active ETF market is growing rapidly, up around 30% last year in terms of assets, and accounting for around $500 billion dollars in assets in total. Bear in mind that this is new growth in active management, bucking the trend and general narrative that active management is simply seeing outflows. So why are they proving so popular? Well, in the US, the major factor is taxes. These vehicles are much more tax efficient than open-ended vehicles, and that's been the clear driver. There are other factors to consider though. ETFs trade throughout the trading day, updating based on live pricing, with settlement much more akin to a stock than traditional open-ended funds. At the margin, costs are likely to be lower, although they do not equate to passive level fees, just because they're ETFs. The lower fees simply reflect slightly lower running costs due to the ETFs, not including the cost of advice, marketing, distribution in the way that open-ended equivalents often do. There are downsides though. Because ETFs cannot close to investors, unlike open-ended funds, strategies with limited capacity are not suitable. One reason why offerings tend to be in large cap assets or more diversified strategies. Another interesting characteristic is the requirement for transparency of holdings. Many investors will see this as a positive, but it can potentially have its challenges for asset managers seeking to build a position over days or weeks as other investors may attempt to front run an idea. I've certainly met lots of active managers who would rather have their holdings lagged over a period over a month, for example. That said, some of the largest active managers in the US have embraced the trend. So back to this side of the pond. Plenty of listeners may not have even heard of active ETFs given their lack of coverage. That's primarily because of the tax advantages uh, simply do not exist in Europe. This limits the attraction significantly, but slightly lower costs are not to be sniffed at, whilst many appreciate the shorter settlement periods. The difference in size of the two markets is pretty stark at present, with the $500 billion market in the US comparing to around 35 billion euros in total in the European domiciled assets as of year end. For the European market, It also seems that there's been much more of a bias towards sustainable options launching than in the US market, which of course makes sense. One obvious limiter is that platforms struggle to deal with ETFs, but there are plenty of market participants that can take advantage. There's been a definite increase in the noise around the active ETFs in Europe in the last 12 months though, with JP Morgan, for example, adding to their range. Another potential catalyst is the arrival of Cathy Wood, the well-known US growth investor and possibly the most famous proponent of active ETFs via her company ARK. Last year, she took a stake in Rise ETF with the intention of launching ARK ETFs equivalent to her US franchise here in Europe. Judging from conversations with a handful of asset managers, there are also more product launches in the pipeline for European investors on their way from other houses. If I had to predict, I would say that in the next three years, the landscape will begin to change, challenging open-ended funds, asset managers, platforms, and even investment trusts. However, I think it's unlikely to take off at the speed seen in the US, if only because the financial benefits are not quite as large as in Europe. As ever, 
we'll see you in due course. With that, we'll close. And as ever, thanks for listening and stay safe.